what's up guys let's continue with the integral method that we're going to be using to identify what type of order our reaction is we've seen the differential method which is cool check it out and we're now going to start with the integral one we're going to propose the order of reaction that's interesting so instead of looking what type of reaction it is so calculating for alpha which was you know, many times the slope of the, dif the differential uh, method, we're going to propose a zero first and second order reactions. So maybe we find that it doesn't fit our models, we will need to fit other data, but in this part of the course we're not going to see that. Only zero first and second orders. Uh, if any of these are correct, uh, the plot will be a straight line when applied, and only one. You, don't, you cannot have like zero and first order re and like this. No. You will have one straight line, and you will have something like this, and maybe something like this. So these, of course, are not valid. The only one is this here. Now, the thing here, we need to integrate each equation. So maybe first and zero order are easy, second order starts getting complicated and more complex. And finally, you get the equations here. So let's start with the zero order. I don't know, it's zero. So, zero order means that Ca goes to the zero power. So it stays actually to one and one times the concentration. Uh, the constant here equals the constant. So first thing first, and this here, integrate from zero or initial concentration to final concentration, initial time to final time, and since it's only one, I will be using Ca here. So I need to value it. And this means Ca is normal, minus Ca is zero, which is in fact here. And this you know it by far is easy. So let me send this to adding and you could use either of these. I will prefer having this one, this one here, which is the one I'm going to graph here. So I got this one from the book. Uh, let me calculate us. Let's set y axis is concentration, x axis will be time here. And just graph, you set all your experimental data, of course you're going to have concentration versus time. Some guy just uh, got them in the lab, maybe you, maybe a friend, I don't know, a colleague, whatever. And you're going to set, this point is this one, this point is this one here, this point is here, etc. You put all that, those data, and if they follow this straight line, which is this line here, so yeah, you will need also to keep values to time and you will get concentrations, which is the straight line. And as you can see here, it fits almost perfectly. I would say it will be an 88, the constant here, at least. So we can say very sure that this is a zero order reaction. As you can see, the B or Y intercept is the initial concentration. With time equals zero, of course, the concentration is that one of I initial. Now let's go actually now to the first order. So this equation must be here. Same equation, batch equation. Uh, one thing here, this is the first power, so we cannot get rid of it. So let me send this one dividing here. Let me see dt here. And once again, integrate from initial concentration to final concentration and from zero to final time. Uh, now here, the integral, hopefully you know that it's a natural logarithm that we need to value from Ca and Ca0 here. So that's my left side, my hands, uh, to my right hand side, it's very easy here. Now, we could leave this, either you send this one to the right, adding, or you can use logarithm uh, properties and get this into a division because it's subtracting, so you have it here. So whatever you choose, uh, be sure to uh, use the y-axis. So this will be your y-axis in this case, and this will be in this case. But of course, if you use this one here, you will need to have this b-intercept. So the books, uh, or the book I use, actually use, they take out this negative sign here, and they twist this. This is due to natural logarithm properties. So you want to get a negative inside you will need to twist or swift them around so they got their y-axis which is this one here this one right here natural logarithm 
of the concentration of A at the beginning, dividing by concentration of A. Now that's one, we need time also because this is my, let's say, x value here, this is my y value here, and k will be my slope. As you see, I have no b intercept because I already sent it to the left. Theoretically, this must be zero. Now, once again, I'm going to set all times and I will get ca of my theoretical model, which is this straight line. Now, from the lab, I know I calculated the time and concentration, or my friend or my colleague. This is experimental data, and I use this experimental data, and these are the dots here. These dots here are my experimental data. And once again, as you can see, it has a good fit, so I am pretty sure this is a first order uh, differential, or no, sorry, first order uh, reaction or rate of reaction. So that's how we do a first order. And the last one will be second order. Here, uh, you have this equation right here, and then what we're going to do is essentially the same we did with the first order. The only thing here is the integration part. You don't get the natural logarithm. And yeah, you still have this here. Once again, you can have either this one here, or you can send this one to the right and change that negative and get this here. The book chooses this one, which actually is the one I prefer because it's all positive. I got this y value, this is a constant. This will be actually my value here of the initial concentration. And I got the mx form, which I prefer. So I got this equation here. I set the inverse of the initial concentration. I set k and I give values to temperature. So I got this, this right here. And you will see that the data fits all well. Once again, my colleague got this temperature, uh, time versus concentration, or concentration versus time. He got concentrations and gets times. And well, I got this. I make this straight line, and I see that actually it's not that good fit. If you see the other ones are very good. Actually, this one is pretty good. This one is good, and this one is okay. Let's say it's above 92% the R square. So I will say, okay, accept it as second order reaction. So, as you can see, we've, saw, we've seen zero order, first order, and second order. But what happens when you have uh, or you fail to model that order? Maybe you use this model and you get this graph. You have no straight line. But it's nice. You will say, oh, it's very nice. It's all in here. Why is it failing? Because you need a straight line. The integral method implies a straight line. So you have no straight line, you have no correlation. So the thing here you will be thinking maybe it's first order, so I will need to do the first order, or maybe even zero order. And if you do these two here and you still have this part here, maybe it's a third order or maybe it's a random one like Langmuir equations which are something like these. A little bit like that, like you cannot get that in integral form, but okay. Anyway, the thing is, know how to use this method because it's very powerful, very easy, and very graphical. That's the good part, I think. And of course, I wanna will be showing you an example, but I think I'm going to do that in my website. So check out my material. There's a free area there. Maybe I'm going to post it there, or there's also a premium area you want to join. Um, I don't know where I'm going to use it, maybe because it's so easy, I'm going to do it on the free area. So that was all or everything on the integral method. Uh, as you can see, we are going to continue with the initial rate method, which is okay, especially because we will be able to model reverse reactions. It's the only one I've seen so far that can do that. So see you in that video. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you liked the video, why not push the like button? 
it really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.